Yo, what's up? Sexy Sam Lender Squad, I'm back from my trip. It went well. Um, thank you guys for all of the emails uh, asking where the hell I was. <laughs> I do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. You're looking out for me, and thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I just went to, uh, took our little road trip up to New York to visit some family, and now I'm back. 30 hours of driving later and 4 hours of sleep. I'm extremely tired, but I'm home. And that means we must record. So let's do it. Um, I'm thinking, I promise you guys, the one hour long video. Ew, I have a diamond border. I promised you guys a one hour long video. So that's what I'm doing today. I promised it. And then I took a last second, like literally last second. Like basically this is what happened. Let me explain this. Basically, I recorded for the day, which I normally record my videos same day that they get uploaded. Normally, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do it a little bit in advance if I'm busy in the next couple days or whatever. But um, normally... I upload videos the same that I record them. And what had happened was, um, my girlfriend texted me was uh, that day, like I it, while I was streaming that day at maybe like 1 p.m. She texted me and she was like, hey, you want to go on a 30 hour road trip? <laughs> we'll leave tonight at 7 p.m. And I was like, what the, f yes, of course I do. Because, you know, spontaneity and whatever. So we did that. Um, but what that meant was my stream ends at 4 p.m. So I had to, within three hours before my drive, I had to record for five days. And I wasn't able to do it. Um, a couple people left the queues. A couple games were bad. You know, I overall, I just wasn't able to get the five five days worth of recording i got three days and um it had to settle for for my five day trip which i apologize for i know there's been no videos uh monday or tuesday but but i do thank you guys very much um for still supporting and you know wishing me the best of luck and uh the safe drives and whatever very grateful unfortunately my car got super fucked during the trip it didn't get hit or anything you know i i'm a pretty good driver so i uh, pretty good defensive driver i should say so i didn't get a hit um but i will say it got fucked up in a different manner where you know a 30 hour road trip will put a toll on your car <laughs> So, um, I needed to get the oil changed, I needed to get the, uh, the cabin filter changed, I needed to get my belt changed, and I needed to get, well, I don't know if I need to get it changed yet, it's in the shop right now, but, um, a AC compressor, which is fucking $1,300 if I have to get it changed, the AC compressor itself is $1,300. So I'm really, really hoping that I don't need to get a change because I got that kind of money right now. I, don't, I mean, nobody does during a fucking quarantine like this, but I'm really hoping it doesn't need to get changed. And if it does, honestly, I just might go without AC for a while until I have the money to get a change. But that's none of your, uh, that's none of your concern. That's my concern. I was letting you guys know. Um, but the trip went amazing. You know, besides the car being a little bit buggered. Uh, the trip went amazing. I had a really good time. It was really refreshing. And um, I had fun. I had fun. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for, again, the kind words and everything. That was really weird. Let's get into some Gamer Nash, bro. Let's get into the gamer nash. He just made a huge mistake by using his two on 
the wave instead of trying to steal that buff from me. I haven't played in five days, by the way, so I'm a bit rusty. I apologize if I miss some easy shit and don't see a play that I normally would make, you know. It's, I'm rusty. I haven't played in five days. Come here, come here, some fucking slag. You know? Hey, come here, some, come here, break. Hey. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what's his relic? He has Aegis. Wow, that was... His name is Ovary Basher. <laughs> I didn't even notice. What the fuck? What a quality name. Um, what else can I tell you about the trip? So, oh, we, uh, so like I said, we drove for thir nearly 30 hours. Um, I think it was 28 hours overall. And we listened to a podcast called Other People's Lives by Joe Sanagato. He's a really funny YouTuber who I suggest you check out. But he has a podcast called Other People's Lives, which is really entertaining. If you uh, normally don't watch shit like that, maybe you should definitely watch it because it's entertaining and gives you a perspective into so many different things. Um, I had the beads that because his stun would have hit me. And then when his stun would have hit me, he would have gotten close enough to drop the alt, which would have just instantly detonated, which would have blown my fucking head off. So yeah, had to do that. Um, what else happened? I got strep throat. I have it currently, so my throat really hurts. But the show must go on. You know, I can't be a bitch. Uh, dude. I don't know if this is a little bit too much TMI. I used to have strep a lot when I was when I was younger. Um, I was like prone to it, or whatever. Like if I was ever sick, it would just be fucking strep throat. So I'm used to the pain of it. Like it, and then, trust me, it's a lot of pain. Uh, to anyone who's had strep throat, you know it's a lot of pain. But uh, I had a new symptom this time, which was crazy. I had my uvula. You know the fucking dangly thing in the back of your throat that, called the uvula. It was huge, bro. I'm not even kidding. Size of my thumb. I like. So I don't know how to explain it, but pretty much it was like. It was like um. Oh, I just forgot that I have to tell you guys the long story too. But this is an hour long video, so it'll just be stories with Sam today. But the fucking uvula, bro. It was huge. I've never had it before, and it was to the point. Or, like, if you're going to get grossed out, just mute for the next, like, minute and a half. But I'm going to say it anyway, so sorry. Um, it was to the point where, like, when it was just... I was just sitting here, like, normal. It was touching the back of my throat. And and the and my tongue. Like, it was between the back of my throat and my tongue. And I, honest to God, felt like I was choking. But I could breathe, so it wasn't like I was, I, like I was choking. But it felt like I was choking consistently. And if you've ever had the feeling of choking, it is definitely not pleasant. Unless, you know, during the intercourse. But, um... Holy damage, Batman. Um, but yeah, it, it, was, it was really, really unpleasant. And then it hurt a lot. Like, I couldn't eat that entire day. I could barely drink anything. I drank some, uh, some lemon and honey because it'll coat your throat and make the pain go away a little bit. Um, took Tylenol, you know, I, I have my antibiotic now, so we're all good on that front. And it feels a lot better now. It's not swollen anymore, but dude, I'm not kidding. Well, I, like, it was so big to the point where when I was, I'm just sitting here, like normal sitting here, my normal breathing sounded like I was snoring because I, because I couldn't, like, I straight up just could not breathe, bro. No joke. It was fucking wild. He detonated that really fast. Oh, I juked the auto attack from Ovary Basher. It was crazy. And then, um, also, <clears throat> what else happened on this trip? This was, it was a weird trip, bro, but it was great. I, I had a really good time, like I said. Um, but I did get sick over it. It was not, not the Corona. I didn't get any Corona. I did drink some Corona beer, but there ain't no virus in my life. Besides strep throat, I guess. But I don't think that's a virus. I think that's a bacteria. 
which is why you take antibiotics for it. Because antibiotics are antibacterials. Bad bacterias, but also good bacterias. Because it kind of lowers your immune system at the moment. But also it helps you by heightening your... I don't know. what, Dude, it doesn't fucking matter. I'm not a doctor. Boom, 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 boom. Damn it, I'm... Suck. Why would you ever use that on me, bro? Okay. I don't know. I I don't know what that was, but it was definitely not what I would have done. But yeah. Anyway, so other things I can tell you about. Basically, I went on vacation, right? Well, kind of, kind of a vacation. It was a it was a break. It wasn't really a vacation. We were just going to see family and. I tried to relax a little bit, so I don't know. Maybe it was kind of a vacation, maybe it wasn't kind of a vacation. It doesn't really matter what you think it was, but... Um, point is, I, I took that trip and... Um, I was like, oh man. You know, I was a little bit bummed. My YouTube is going to go down. My Twitch is going to go down. And surprisingly, my YouTube did not stop. Y'all were fucking killing it. With the support while I was gone. Huge video numbers, as normal, I mean, as is normal at the moment, which is really weird to say, but like, 30k views on my videos in like 24 hours, which is just, uh, it's insane, it's incredible, you know, and not to mention, we got over a thousand subscribers in five days, uh, actually I can check what I'm at right now, and I'll tell you how many subs we got over five days. Because we were, I just hit 113,000 when I left. I hit 113,000 subs when I left on my trip. And we are at currently uh, YouTube Studio. Currently 114,364 subscribers. So we gained 1,400 subs nearly in. Um, five days <laughs> which has never happened it, well I shouldn't say never it happened during the um, I want to kill him instead of the Titan there we go it happened in December when I was really close to hitting the 100k mark we got like 7k subs that month which is just fucking insane that's never gonna happen again but um, <clears throat> but basically I mean, it's just been crazy. Like, I, I, can I show you the numbers without giving away the money? Because I, I actually don't think I can. Yeah, I'm still in Diamond. I know. It's because when the, the new fucking patch came out and then I left for a trip. So, you know, re re relax. Okay. Relax. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Um, Let's see. Does this... No, that shows revenue too. Can I minimize revenue? So I can show you guys? Options, hide metric. Perfect. Shows views, watch time, subs, impressions, impression through click rate. That's fine. I don't really care about that stuff. You guys can see that and I won't get banned, I'm pretty sure. So this was the fucking view count in the past 28 days. Last 28 days. You see that right there? Last 28 days, 2,023,000 views. Um, I mean, shit, guys. For real, I, I get... How, how am I supposed to be okay with that? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I saw this comment um, the other day. It, maybe, maybe it was a week ago at this point. Who was like, Sam... You're hyping everyone up too much, and you're making it seem like you're getting a lot more support than you are, and it's really pathetic. You know? You're trying to get people on the support train, and it's pathetic to see. That's why I'm unsubscribing. And in my head, I was like... I, you know, obviously I didn't say anything to the guy, because I... What do I say to that? You know? He's already stuck in his ways. There's nothing I can say that would get him out of it. But... 
when you have two million people, over two million people watching your shit in less than a month, you know, it, it's mind boggling. Like, just imagine two million people. Like, hold on, let me, let me what's the population? Let's see. The population of Atlanta, which is 500,000, Nashville, which is 700,000, and Charlotte, which I don't know where the fuck Charlotte is, but that's 900,000. If you mash all that shit together, I still have more than it. Like, how do you even comprehend? I mean, I don't have more than it. I'm like, uh, technically, I'm like 100,000 less than it. But uh, the the entire population of major cities, you know, in the past 28 days, I don't know how anyone could look at that and be like, yeah, that's not growth. Yeah, that's not amazing. Yeah, that's not phenomenal. That, like, it blows my fucking mind. Like, just thinking about it right now, I'm like, actually, why? Like, really? Uh, Ex explain to me how <laughs> like i didn't do anything what did i do bro i didn't do anything i, ju I just uploaded the vid same videos i've been doing for the past year and a half and they're popping up everywhere now it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy and i don't know what to say other than thank you of course and um just keep being positive man like that's what i've been about for the past you know two years i i had a change in my life and you know i've been through a lot of shit which isn't fun to talk about but i've been through a lot of shit and there's 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 too much negativity Everyone is negative all the fucking time. What's the point? What do you do by being negative? You bring other people down? Like, it's just... There's no point in negativity is what I'm saying. And, oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. And, I think the sooner people realize that, the better everything will be. Not only in Smite, but like in the world. Where people just start recognizing... Toxicity breeds toxicity, and positivity breeds positivity. And there's nothing in the world better than making someone smile. Straight up. And if you think that that's like a dumb saying, then you're probably a dumb person. I'll just be honest. Because if you've never... If you've never done something that just randomly makes someone smile, and it's not like for your own gain, you know? You're not doing it for your own personal gain, but if you're just... You just want to make someone smile, man. It's the greatest feeling on the planet. No flex. Which is why positivity is the greatest thing on the planet, because all it does is make people smile, you know? It makes people happy. What's so bad about that? Nothing is bad about that. That's what. That's what's bad about it. Nothing. <sighs> Anyways, so my lung story, right? Because people wanted to hear that, and I said I was going to do it in my hour-long video that I never uploaded because I'm a scumbag and an idiot. Um, not really. I just didn't have the time to record it. Uh, oh God. Can I kill you? I'm pretty sure he's dead though, right? Like, actually, as fuck. Okay. So, anyways, um... The lung story. A lot of people know... Almost everyone... I think at this point... Knows that I have one lung. And the people that don't know that I have one lung... Are like, what the fuck? You have one lung? That's not true. It is true, and let me explain. When I was 15 years old... Still a wee lad in high school. I'm 25 now, by the way. Um, 
when I was 15 years old, I was taking a physics test, and I felt a very, very bad pain in my chest. Um, now, being the person that I was, very pain tolerant person, and very nothing bad can happen to me, I'm 15 years old, I kind of brushed it off. And I, you know, I laid my head down on my table and I, um, I was cussing under my breath. You know, nobody could hear me do these things, but I just couldn't take the test. Like, I, I couldn't focus. It was just too much pain. But I didn't want to, like, inconvenience anyone. I didn't want to tell people that I was in pain so they might get worried because no, no one jokes around with chest pain, you know? Um... So, basically, I sat through with a, of, oh my god, dude, just talking about it makes me sweat. Like, the pain was so bad. But I sat through that test. Uh, I didn't fucking take it, but I sat through it and um, went on to my next class, which luckily for me was my homeroom class. And also, luckily for me, my teacher liked me. Even though we had a weird dynamic because all I she was a German teacher, right? My my homeroom teacher was a German teacher. And I took her class. I took German. And unfortunately for her, that also means <laughs> that I was in two of her classes, which you know, I was I, I was a bad student. I'll, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I just wasn't good at school. So I would just joke around all the time. And um, anyways, that's a different story for a different time. I went into my homeroom class and she knew me. And she looked at me and she could see my eyes were bloodshot and I was I was ghost pale. Like like there was no blood flow going on, you know, like um I was just ghost pale and she was like and I went to go sit down. By the way, I couldn't walk either. I um, I was limping around like I was a 105-year-old man. Um, taking like the little babyest steps in the world. Because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Like my muscle just wasn't working no matter where it was in my body. You know, because it, it didn't have oxygen. I didn't know that at the time. But it, it didn't have oxygen. Of course it's not going to fucking do anything when it's not breathing, you know. Um, and, you know, when I took a breath at the time, it was very wheezy, like, it was like, <gasps> you know, it was very tough to, to breathe, and, um, my homeroom teacher saw this and was like, dude, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, nothing, don't even worry. Oh, war, I'm fine. And she was like, look, if you die in my class, I'm going to be really pissed off. So I was like, all right, you know what? That's fair, because I would be pissed off if someone died in my classroom. Um, so she sent me to the nurse's office. All of this happened within like an hour, by the way. She sent me to the nurse's office. And I... The, the nurse's office door is like real fucking heavy. I don't know why, but it was big fucking heavy. And, um, so basically, I went to go open the door, and I, I couldn't open it. <laughs> like, I, I I physically couldn't open the door. And I was, I had already gone to state for wrestling. Like, I wasn't weak. I, I was pretty strong. Um, <clears throat> but I couldn't open the door. And basically, my trying to exert that much pressure... I think, or exert that much power, I uh, passed out for a second. The door closed on my head. Not good. It wasn't good at all. Um, but I woke up, I'm, you know, sitting in the chair next to, I guess, my nurse, and um, waiting on somebody else to get seen. You know, like, I had just passed out and got put in a chair and and somebody else is being seen over me. And, um, 
you know, five minutes go by maybe and uh, <clears throat> the other person got seen. And then she looks at me and, you know, obviously they take your blood pressure. They, they go to like listen to your heart to make sure everything's fine. And when she went to go listen to my heart, she couldn't hear anything. Because it, my left side had collapsed and she obviously, she put it here, you know, to listen to your heart. And it was so, the sound of my heart was so muffled because there was so much air in my chest cavity that you couldn't hear it. So she was like, what's going on? I don't hear a heartbeat. You're like walking dead right now. Um, mind you, still bloodshot eyes, super pale, really sweaty. Um, and... I have no control over my muscle at this point. Um, and so she she lays me down in this like hospital bed that they have for like serious cases in the nurse's office, and then calls nine one one to get an ambulance over. And she was like, "This boy is going into cardiac arrest. He's gonna fucking die if you don't get here." And in my head, I'm like, "Excuse me, I'm 15." And I'm healthy. There's no way I'm having a heart attack right now, you know? Um, but she thinks I'm having a heart attack. And, of course, I'm like, that's some bogus garbage, you know? Of course I'm not having a heart attack. There's no there's no chance. Um, but, yeah, so she thought I was having a heart attack. So, you know, she calls the cops. Or, not the cops, I guess, but the ambulance, which is also the same number for the cops. And, uh, they come, my mom gets called. Oh my god. My mom comes barreling through the doors like she's the fucking Hulk, dude. And she's like, where's my child? You know, like, and I can't blame her, you know. I, I, to her, I'm having a heart attack at age 15, you know. Um, so she comes barreling through, and, uh, she sees me. And at this point, the nurse is like testing my muscle because you have a heart attack in your left hand. You really have no muscle. So she was like, okay, squeeze this paper towel as hard as you could. Like she wet a little paper towel for me to put on my forehead to keep me a little cooler, I guess. And she was like, squeeze this as hard as you can. And so I'm like, I'm like, you know, as hard as I can. And even though I'm squeezing as hard as I can, mind you really strong dude back in the day um it, the paper towel just falls out of my hand like i i can't even i can't even close my hand enough to hold a wet paper towel and so she's like this is not good this is not good <laughs> so the ambulance gets there and they you know do all the do, do all the shit and they're hooking me up to an iv because they also think that i am having a heart attack um but they can't get the iv in 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 the nurse's office so instead they're like okay we're gonna take you to the truck take you to the hospital and take you straight to the er because you... shit's bad dude so it's like all right fair enough they put me in the back of the hospital or the the ambulance and try to take my blood or try to put an iv in six fucking times no joke they put it in here and then they put it in here and then they put it in here like you're on your wrist and um all six times they attempted, because they attempted on both arms. All six times they attempted, didn't work. So that didn't help with the pain, because that fucking hurt. When they're, because like, they're not just like, stick in, didn't work, okay, take it out. They're like, stick in, they're like, wiggling around, like, where the fuck is your vein, dude? You know, like, yeah. uh, so it hurt when they, when they missed six times, but, but yeah. So, that's basically how I got to the hospital. And then, um, why is this thing killing the shit out of me? Um, and then when I got there, you know, I got in the hospital bed. They took chest x-rays. They took EKGs and MRIs and a bunch of shit to figure out what was going on with me. Um, and they, uh, were very incompetent because they said that, they don't know what's wrong with me. Meanwhile, I'm sitting in my bed watching this movie called Igor that 
I literally I was watching it and I passed out and I know I passed out because when you pass out it's like you blink almost um it's like it's like I'm sitting here playing a game I blink and we're 45 minutes in you know that's me passing out um and that happened when I was watching the movie it just started I blinked and I woke up and the credits were rolling and um it was very scary because the doctors and the nurses and my mom were standing over my bed trying to wake me up. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on? Because I felt fine, you know, like the pain had already gone. Um, and I felt like I was okay at that point. Uh, clearly I wasn't. But then they sent me home because when they were looking at the, at the graphs and the the chest x-ray they were very incompetent and they didn't know what happened because i think what they were looking for was specifically my heart because that's what everyone thought it was was my heart um so they just kind of glimpsed over the fact that half of my lung was missing because i had a 50 percent lung collapse which if you don't know is a fucking huge um and yeah so that happened hold on i'm fighting hold on hold the horses um so that happened and then please don't kill me please don't kill me where are you oh he ran that way um but yeah so then my mom was like what is going on you know what's happening they say nothing's wrong with my kid yet he just passed out twice you know so she's mad which again she has the right to be i'm pissed off because i thought i was dying from a heart attack <laughs> and they're telling me my heart's perfectly fine so i'm like okay then what happened to me and um and then um the next day comes and i'm like that's weird. I, I feel weak, but I feel fine. You know, like, I can breathe and I'm good. Whatever. So I go back to school the next day. <laughs> so I went back to school. Uh, my mom was asleep, so she didn't know I went to school. But I went back to school the next day. And um, that's when the doctor called my mom and was like, where's your son? And my mom went into my room, and I was there. She called me. She's like, are you at school? I was like, yeah. She's like, I'm coming to get you right now, asshole. So then she came and got me. Um, because she found out what happened. But she didn't tell me until I got home that my lung collapsed. And in my head, I'm like, what do you mean my lung collapsed? You mean I'm running on one lung right now? And um, she was like, no, 50% of your left lung had collapsed. Which means... Um, this is the part where it's going to get a little bit hard to follow, but there's these things, if you want to look them up, you can, they're called this, it's a bleb, and basically you're born with blebs, or you can develop blebs, I'm, no, nobody is sure how exactly you can develop blebs, but, um, there are little pockets of skin on your lung, or like tissue on your lung, where normally your lung is kind of thick. But these these tissues or this this pocket is like balloon thin, like it's very very thin and it can pop very easily. And when it pops, obviously it lets the air out of your chest because or out of your lung because you know obviously if there's nothing holding it in, then air just travels to wherever it can. Um, so my lung had collapsed and all the air that I was breathing in was filling my chest cavity. I'm a lucky person because my body heals I guess not no, not necessarily better but it heals quicker than most people um, at least my lungs do to the point where I didn't really need um, I didn't need a chest tube which is what they'd normally give you to drain out the air and help you breathe better after a uh, lung collapse so I didn't need that chest tube um, because my lung had sealed itself off basically 
after only a few hours, which is why they couldn't find the the thing on the <clears throat> on the X-ray immediately. And the only reason they found it on the X-ray was because they found all that air in my lung. They found all the air in my chest cavity, and they're like, "That's weird. Why is that there?" And then they found out later that there's my lung. Um, so all of that happened within a span of. I want to say 16-ish hours. Um, it was real not cool. And basically, this guy's just trying to backdoor me. And he's a Scotty main and it's really fucking nasty actually. I missed that. Um, but yeah, all of that happened within a span of like 16 hours. Okay, that was really stupid. And I... I mean, that was the story of my first lung collapse. You might be thinking, wow, that's intense, dude. So where does the one lung thing happen? Um... <clears throat> <laughs> that happened 24 times. My lung collapsed 24 separate times. 12 side on 12 times on my left, 12 times on my right. To this day, I don't think there's another person on the planet who that's happened to, <laughs> which is not something I'm bragging about. I'd rather not hold rank 1 title in lung collapses, but I do, I think. And um because of that, after the 24th one, I was like, dude, <laughs> This has got to stop, man. I, I can't be dealing with this shit. Because it happened 24 times in, in four years. I was 19 when the 24th one happened. Um, and that's when I started thinking, like, is there any kind of permanent fix to this? I don't want this to just keep happening. Um, to which Mr. Doctor Man replied, yeah, it's a surgery that kind of blows ass. And I was like, I'll take it, you know, like, give it to me, chief. You know, um, so I'm like, all right, what's the surgery? And it's called pleurodesis. Now, basically what pleurodesis is, is they go in and they stick your lung to your chest wall using talcum powder or scar tissue. In my case, it was scar tissue, I believe, but it might have been talcum powder. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, but basically what they do is they cut out the infected parts of the lung, the parts of your lung that have blebs on them or, you know, balloon like, uh, tissue that's holding your lung together. And they're like, okay, we got to cut these parts out, stitch it together, make your lung a little bit smaller, but it's not, it's okay because it's smaller, but it works more efficiently, you know, so. Um, <clears throat> and I had about half of each of my lung. So, collectively I have a, about one lung. And, yeah, that's, that's my story. I had two of those surgeries, one on my left, one on my right. And if you want to hear about the surgery, I guess that could be another story. That scared me. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. You don't scare me, you pansy bitch. Um. Alright. So, yeah, that's, that. I mean, that's the story, right? 24 lung collapses, a bunch of surgery, well, two surgeries, I guess, but uh, six incisions, two chest tubes, um, lots of recovery time, and... Yeah, that's that's basically the story about how I have one lung and how I have lung collapses and blebs. Uh, fun fact, I am proud of this one. I have the world's largest recorded bleb in uh, 35 years of history. <laughs> nice. Unless it got beaten recently, which I don't know because that have my last surgery was four years ago, I believe, maybe five at this point. I don't know. Um, 
PB bro. <clears throat> so yeah, that's interesting. That's what happened. That's how it is. Um, he said that I had a bleb basically the size of, of a fully adult male fist. So if you're at home and you're a fully adult male, um, make a fist, put that up to your chest and be like, wow, that's how much just one bleb had to get cut out of his lung. Just one. And there was hundreds. <laughs> there was so much. Um, during the surgery, they used about 200 staples in each side. Um, stitches, you know, I had a chest tube. And basically, a chest tube, if you don't know, I'm sure you could look it up. But it's kind of gross, so I wouldn't assume you would look it up. It's about this big around, um, which is pretty big. I mean, when you put it to your face or whatever, or, or your side, because it goes in right here. Um, sometimes they break your ribs. I think in my case, they went under my rib cage. Um, they put it in right here. And it's just a tube like this thick that is see-through, which is so weird to experience. I can't even imagine to tell you. Um, but they stitch that into your side. And it just, like, keeps your lung breathing while also simultaneously sucking out gross shit. And I had to carry around when... Because <clears throat> when you have the surgery, they expect you to, like, stand up and walk down the hallway and shit to start, you know, getting your muscles going again. Um, you know, start getting that, that oxygen back to your muscles so you don't just waste away. Uh, so I had, to, I had to pick up, like, this thing because the tube had to drain into something, right? So I had my IV in this hand and a big, like two gallon thing of my own blood being sucked out of my body that I was just holding in my left hand that was connected to the tube inside of me that by the way went from here on snaked all the way up to the top of my chest so it was huge and very deep and it felt really weird um and I had to carry that thing while holding my IV and I was like a 90 year old man walking down the hallway taking baby steps like bent over like oh god oh god and um yeah it was fuck man just talking about it makes it it makes it seem a lot worse I think that it actually was uh well that <laughs> it was pretty bad but I don't know cause I don't know, man. It's just something I've experienced that talking about it, it seems crazy, you know, but when I lived it, it was just another aspect of my life I had to work through, you know, and, and it wasn't even like bad necessarily for me. I just had to get through it. You know, I, I had the sense going into the surgery, like there's a chance I don't wake up and it's a pretty good chance because Anything that has to do with your lungs or your heart has a pretty high risk associated with it. So I went into the surgery like, this could be the last time I'm awake, you know, like, and it's a really negative thought process, you know, like, it, it really affected me for quite some time. And, you know, I, maybe that's the way that I was, I don't know, but it was, it was bad. And, um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> if you don't need that surgery, don't get it. It's not fun. Um, also, <clears throat> they put way too much en anesthesia, I think, is the word that I'm looking for. But I don't really know if I'm honest. They put a lot of that shit in me. Um, my first surgery, they put too much and I couldn't pee. Because my bladder was still closed off. Because my body still thought it was asleep. So they had to put a catheter in. While I was awake. Which was the most painful experience to date. That I've ever had. It was the worst. Like, I, I don't know how to explain. The pain. Just imagine an elephant stomping your dick. For 45 seconds. So it's... it's not pleasant, very, very bad, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone. There you go. So that's my story of my one lung, also the story of my giant uvula, 
and the story of my trip. So yeah, it's just story time with Sam, I guess. And um, I hope I didn't gross you guys out too much. I know it is a gross thing. Um, but I mean, literally speaking, you guys asked for it. So, <laughs> so there you go. There it is, boys and girls. Now you know the story of one Sam and one Lun. Jose Delgado. I don't even know what to talk about anymore. I'm like, whoa. I've, what do I talk about now? I have no more stories. That's not true. I got a lot of stories, but... I don't know. You know my one goes through shit, right? Um, literally, what's the point in hitting me when I can just hit you harder? Uh, let's see. Might be able to kill him here. He pillared himself off from the boys. The little boys. I do wonder if I'll ever be able to kill him. Because he's playing the big passive game. Hmm. Just gonna let all these minions go into tower range. Bold play. We'll see if it works out for him. Um, I think I want speed buff over red buff. Alright, pretty good. Let's do speed buff now. I'm like nervous now. Like I don't, I actually almost don't even want to post this video. Because like, maybe people are going to be grossed out and receive that story negatively because it is a gross story and I don't know I don't know you did ask for it but like maybe you didn't really ask for it you know maybe it's kind of like that I don't know I don't know I don't, I don't know maybe I'm overthinking maybe I'll just chill let's just play the video game okay it's a video game after all that's what I'm here for what's up ding dong okay still a ding dong though Got him with the beads, boys. Got him with the beads. Sometimes that's all it takes. One well-timed beads to get you ahead of the ahead of the curve, and then um, and then it's a snowball effect after that. Hopefully, unless he just beats my ass right now, and then I look like an idiot, which could happen, honestly. I mean, that actually did a lot of damage. I don't know if I'm scared of him right now. Am I scared of him right now? Not really. He... That doesn't do a lot. Nice. 
Nice. I knew his two was down because he just cleared the wave. So I knew that if he wanted to get me away from him when I ulted, he had to jump. So basically what I did was, if he has to get me away when I ult, he's probably going to jump in place for kill potential. Which means, I didn't want to pick up red, I wanted speed buff or whatever. Which means, in my case, all I do is I ult, and then I step away. Which means he jumps in place, which means he lands, which means then my 2-1 combo beats his ass when he lands. That was the game plan. And it worked out. Surprisingly. You literally don't scare me at all. I do so much damage, bro. Um, maybe I just go blue buff here. I was thinking about backing and getting tier 2, but probably just do wave, do blue, and I feel like I can farm a thousand gold. I'm in a little bit of a weird spot in terms of, like, my health, but I have beads up, I have alt up, he shouldn't be able to fight me. He doesn't have stacks or anything on his shit. Oh, hey, that scared me. Nice. All right, so, I mean, that was kind of like the same thing I did before, where I use my beads so that he has to jump, and then I send my damage over to where he lands. So, same kind of thing, same kind of thing. Kind of just reading this guy kind of well, I think. Alright. This is Thor. Wow. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I'll just go Thorns here. Could go red buff. I picked up blue because I'm about to finish my transcendence and I finish my breastplate with that back, which means I go from 0% cooldown without blue to 40% cooldown with blue. <laughs> so uh, that's a that's a huge that's a huge swing in things, and I don't think he'll be able to adjust to it without ever fighting me in between, you know? doesn't scare me I think he knows he doesn't scare me which maybe scares him hello dude okay. I think I got most of the wave so my wave should be pushing I don't know if I'm able to get Phoenix with that play, but maybe. Nope. Nope. Not able to get the Phoenix, but I am able to run away efficiently, so. No worries there. One angry on her. The tools to focus my rage. Your middle tower is under attack. Um, all right, I have beads up for his next, like, impale or jump or whatever. So I think I should try to play aggressive. And my version of playing aggressive here is pushing wave, all ending bull demon, and if, I sh if he shows up. 
all on him. Seems like he's really scared of my little minion over there. He's playing around my minion. Alright, Phoenix down, we're full health. He doesn't scare me, his impale is down. So... That's game over. GG, brother. Um, <clears throat> Alright. I guess I'll show you guys the MMR because I think he did have higher MMR. So hopefully I gained something from him. Um, If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. And uh, make sure to tell me what you think about my story or whatever. That's a lot of MMR, actually. Um, And yeah. Until next time, guys, peace.